Hello, my name is Phil Pereira, and I'm the Emergency Ultrasound Coordinator at the New York Presbyterian Hospital in New York City, and welcome to Soundbites Cases. In this module entitled Cardiac Echocardiography, Parasternal Long Axis View Part 2, we're going to look further into the uses of the parasternal long axis view at the patient's bedside. Recall that the parasternal long axis view of the heart is going to be obtained by placing the probe into position A as shown here. That will configure the probe just left of the sternum at about intercostal space 3 with a marker dot down towards the patient's left elbow. Now the first two goals from the parasternal long axis view of the heart are going to be first of all to look for left ventricular contractility. The second goal is going to be to investigate for a pericardial effusion. Let's begin by looking at some clips going over left ventricular contractility. Here's a video clip showing excellent contractility of the left ventricle as taken from a medical student triathlete. Recall the chambers of the heart as taken from the parasternal long axis plane, the left atrium as seen in the posterior location, the mitral valve just to the left of the left atrium, and the left ventricle as seen with its hypertrophic walls. Notice the strong contractility of this left ventricle as the endocardial walls almost meet during systole. We see the aortic valve to the right of the left ventricle and the right ventricle in a superficial location above the left ventricle. Recall the descending aorta, the cylinder cut in cross section just posterior to the left atrium. And note the posterior pericardial reflection coming off just anterior to the descending aorta and posterior to the left ventricle. And with a small indicator arrow, I'll trace out the posterior pericardial reflection. Note here the absence of any dark or anechoic fluid collections. Now let's contrast that last video clip with this one taken from a patient with an advanced cardiomyopathy. We recall the left ventricle and the right ventricle in a superficial location above the LV. Notice the very poor percentage change of the endocardial walls of the left ventricle during systole indicating a very decreased ejection fraction. Here's a clip taken from a patient who presented with a transplanted heart and acute shortness of breath. We'll begin by identifying the descending aorta, as shown here to the bottom part of the picture. Note the posterior pericardial reflection, that white line coming off just anterior to the descending aorta. But what we see here is the presence of a dark fluid collection, a pericardial effusion that layers out posteriorly above the posterior pericardial reflection, and comes anteriorly to surround the heart. With a small indicator arrow, I'll point to the anterior portion of the pericardial effusion and note the chaotic movement of the right ventricle as shown here. This is indicative of early tamponade or high pressures within the pericardial sac. Here's a video clip showing a potential mimic of a pericardial effusion. Let's begin by identifying that descending aorta as a cylinder cut and cross section posterior to the left atrium. and We identify the posterior pericardium as shown here coming off just anterior to the descending aorta. Note the presence here of a large dark or anechoic fluid collection, but note that it layers out posteriorly there to the pericardium. Thus, this fluid is within the pleural cavity and not within the pericardial cavity. With a small indicator arrow, I'm again reinforcing the pericardial reflection and the presence of the fluid within the thoracic cavity, a pleural effusion. Next, we'll look at a video clip from a patient who presented with acute shortness of breath requiring intubation. First, we'll begin by identifying the descending aorta, then the posterior pericardial reflection. Note here the presence of fluid both within the pericardial sac, as shown here layering anterior to the pericardium, and posteriorly within the pleural cavity, layering out just below the pericardial reflection. Why, you might ask, does the patient have all this fluid? Well, let's look closely at the mitral valve, and on the posterior mitral valve leaflet, we see a calcified vegetation. This patient, in fact, had an infected dialysis catheter with mitral valve endocarditis and had developed wide open mitral valve regurgitation resulting in heart failure and all the fluid layering out within the pericardium and the thoracic cavity. In conclusion, the parasternal long axis view of the heart gives a great deal of information about our patient's condition and can be instrumental in emergency care. Through this module, I hope now that you'll have a better idea on how to grade left ventricular contractility as good through poor. Also, to be able to identify the presence of a pericardial effusion. So I hope to see you back as Soundbites continues and we look further at the cardiac echocardiography examinations.